close your eyes, take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths. Watch how the breathing feels. And stay with the breath. Don't go wandering off someplace else. Make sure you're here to train the mind. As for the things of the world, that's just what they are. They are things of the world. You get to use them for a while, and then they pass out of your hands. But your mind stays with you, so we're to make you, you want to make sure your mind is always in good shape. That's why we've come here, because we've realized that the happiness of the mind is the most important thing. The pleasures of the body, even though they may give some pleasure to the mind, they don't last very long. And sometimes they leave a bitter aftertaste, because you think about the things you did in order to obtain those pleasures. And sometimes they weren't all that honorable. And so you're left with the karma of having done those things. But when you train the mind, focus on getting the mind in good shape by developing good qualities in the mind, that kind of happiness lasts. You think about the happiness is going to come, it feels good. When you're doing it, it feels good. After you've done the things, it feels good, the things that lead to happiness in the mind. Things like generosity, when you're generous with your things, generous with your forgiveness, generous with your knowledge and time. When you observe the precepts, in other words, you make up your mind you're not going to harm anybody. This gives pleasure to the mind, even though there may be some pleasures you gain by lying or stealing or engaging in other activities that break the precepts. You realize that the, the sense of well-being that comes from inside is worth a lot more than those pleasures. And all too often, after those pleasures have gone, they leave you with regret. And There's no amount of money in the world that can buy off the regret. So here, when you have a mind that has no regrets, because you have nothing to, you've done nothing to regret, you've got a real treasure. So you want to maintain that treasure, and especially when you're working directly with the mind like this, this is when you really see the, the advantages of teaching the mind to have a well-being that's independent of things outside. You just sit here with the mind centered, and there's a sense of lightness that comes with that. When you learn how to maintain this in different situations, you come here to the monastery because it's a quiet place. It's a conducive place to training the mind. But then you realize you can take this out and train the mind in other places as well. And you realize this is an important skill, that no matter what the situation is outside, you can have a sense of well-being that comes from within. Even when outside, it also starts including your own body. It starts getting sick, it starts getting old. It starts leaving you bit by bit by bit. If you can develop this sense of well-being in the mind, you've got a real treasure. So this is why the Buddha said the real treasures in life are what he called noble treasures. There was a man who came to see him one time. He was very impressed with someone else's wealth in terms of the gold and the silver. And the Buddha says, well, that kind of wealth is subject to thieves, and it's subject to taxes, and it's subject to all kinds of things. Hateful heirs, who knows? And it's not really yours. You can't take it with you. Whereas the treasures that come from training the mind. The sense of well-being that you gain when you develop qualities like mindfulness and alertness and discernment, concentration. That's a treasure that nobody else can take from you. It's not subject to fire. It's not subject to any of the dangers of the world, not even the dangers of death. You can still take this is the kind of treasure you can take with you. So when we see the value of this treasure, the treasure of a well-trained mind, a mind that can find happiness within. You should devote all your efforts to developing this treasure and maintaining it as best as you can. Not let your attention or your energy go drifting off to things that would destroy this treasure. So always keep in mind that this is the most important thing you've got in life. You've got the quality of your mind. So treat it that the, uh, like the treasure that it really is.